Hey everyone, welcome in, welcome back to my channel, The Artificial Trainer here. Today we're going to go through an exciting model that lets you infinitely extend videos called Skyreel's Differential Extension. So if you've ever seen a movie and, and you're like, oh, it stopped a split second too soon, this model will let you extend it and see and get to see what was gonna happen just after that it cut. So you can put in a prompt and extend the video past where it originally cut off. If you like this type of content, hit the subscribe button below. Subscribing to my channel really helps me create more content and help and ultimately help all of you even more. So I'm gonna use Artificial Studio for this, which essentially just lets me manage your comfy UI environment. So if you're interested in checking out Artificial Studio, go ahead. Go ahead and send me a message on Patreon or Discord. If you just want the workflow and the model links, head to the Patreon post in the description below. It'll bring you here. The workflow is in this post and there's also the two model download files. So these are used for Linux, but if you don't have Linux, you can just put this into ChatGPT and ask it to give you the links to the models and the corresponding file name and path to put the model in. And then that'll get you all set up in order to run the workflows. Okay, so if you're not using Artificial Studio, just go to Comfy UI and open it, open Comfy UI up. If you're using Artificial Studio, go to App Links, Comfy UI. All right, and then we just need to set up the models first. So head up to the model loader section and you want to take a look at models or take a look at the one video model loader this is kind of the central point and then let's take a look at the inputs so for torch compile if you don't have triton working you'll have to bypass this node it's worth it to try to get torch compile working because you have 30 percent speed up and 30 percent benefit to vram using this but not everyone can get it working so i understand that just bypass it block swap so when using the 14b model even I'm on a 5090 and I have to swap 20 blocks using the quantized version. So most probably won't be able to run this 14B version. So right now I'm using the FP8 quantized version of the 14B model because I was running out of VRAM and I'm on a 5090. So the FP8 allowed me to run it, I think at about 22 gigabytes, but good news, there's also a 1.3B version too. So you can also use the 1.3B version and that will should allow you to fit it into your VRAM if you don't have, you know, at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Okay, and then I am using the CauseVid LoRa. Go check out my vase video if you don't know about this CauseVid LoRa yet, but this essentially, I, I wanna say it cuts the generation time to about 10%. So if a video was taking 10 minutes without the LoRa, it takes, now takes one minute, which is incredible. It's really made, it's really been a big benefit to almost every workflow that uses WAN as a base model. And Skyreels is based off of WAN, which is why this LoRa works for us. Um, and just another note, if you're using the 1.3B Skyreels model, make sure you're using the 1.3B CauseVid LoRa. All right, and then the last thing you need to do is change the VAE to the correct VAE. Remember, this is the wrapper VAE, not the native VAE, so make sure you use the correct one there. Okay, and then I am using the native clip for Juan just so that I don't have to download two models. All right, and then that is it for the setup. I'll just go through the sampler real quick just so that we're all on the same page on how it works. Because, so Skyreels needs to know the FPS of the original video, which is what's set here. That allows it to generate the correct temporal conditions to make the video make sense. So make sure you set the correct FPS. For the CFG, leave it as one because we're using the CauseVid LoRa with four steps. And then for the scheduler, we're gonna use UniPC. I would recommend either UniPC or UniPC beta. All right, and then you can control how many frames are in each section of the generation using this empty embeds node. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use 97 frames at 24 FPS. Okay, so after the model 
generates the first first chunk. So this is going to be 97 frames it generates. We decode it and we pass it through to the next sampler. So if we wanted a different number of frames, this empty embeds node is where we would set that. So if you wanted to do 97 frames and then 61 frames or something like that, you could set that there. We decode it again, pass it through the next sampler. And if we wanted to change the prompt this time, all you need to do is just grab this set of nodes up here and drag it down into whatever sampler you want. And you can just keep extending it by copying these groups and pasting another one onto the end if you want. So essentially how it's working is this left side here is loading the models, this, and then each one of these is its own kind of little mini generation that's extending upon the last generation. And then at the top here is where we're combining all the videos. So if there was another one that you wanted to combine, then you would just need to get the results from the fourth one and pass it in here and add an input count, update it, update it, and then just drag that next input in. All right, so this is a really cool workflow. I know it seems like a lot, but I think once you start actually trying to use it, it'll make a lot more sense on how everything is coming together. So we have two options. We can start with a video already, or we can just start with an image. Let's do the one starting with an image first. We'll run it with the 1.3b version, and then I'll do one that starts with a video, and we'll run it with the 14b version. All right, so I changed my model to make sure I'm using the 1.3b model, and then the LoRa, the Cosvid LoRa is the 1.3b. All right, so this should run really quick with Cosvid and the 1.3b LoRa. So just for your awareness, we were only through one sampler, but that took 10 seconds with the Cosvid LoRa. All right, so that was a 10 second video in under two minutes it generated. Now I understand this is the 1.3B model. We're not getting a lot of movement. We're kind of getting jittery movement, but still really impressive that we can get 10 seconds generated in under two minutes, maybe even under one minute, honestly. I didn't time exactly how long it took. Yeah, it's actually under one minute. It was about 60 seconds to generate everything. Okay, so now I want to go and give the 14B model a shot so let's do 540p that's another cool thing about sky reels is we can do 540p now so 960 by 544 and we're gonna use this woman dancing and with and then we're just gonna use 17 frames to start and pass that through over to here okay make sure you choose the right cause vid laura as well so 14b sky reels 14b cause vid and then I'm gonna to need to turn on my block swap a bit to be able to fit the model. All right, let's run it. I mean, you can kind of tell where it switches, right? From being the original to the generated, but the consistency is pretty great. You just get a little bit of this contrast, unfortunately. Um, playing with the shift might help out, help out a little bit with that, or maybe playing with this add noise condition may help too. All right, so under four minutes for this quality of generation. It's not perfect, right? Like it definitely degrades as the video goes along, which is a problem with this model. But I mean, it's it's pretty solid. The consistency is there and it's a fun model to play around with. All right, so that is it for today's video. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button below. Join the Discord if you wanna join a community that's passionate about learning AI and teaching others AI. Follow my other socials. Anywhere you can help me get exposure helps the channel. I appreciate you watching this video and I'll talk to you in the next one.